A British royal wedding makes for a glamorous occasion, but beneath all that pomp and circumstance, the bride and groom are forced to follow all kinds of rules. Curious what happens to a royal bride's bouquet after the ceremony? Keep watching to find out! Picking out the perfect wedding dress is the dream of every bride-to-be. While many people already have an idea of what they do or don't want to wear on their special day, this important decision isn't solely up to a royal wife-to-be. In fact, if you're going to be a royal bride, your bridal outfit must comply with precise formal requirements. For example, tradition expects the bride to wear a somewhat modest dress. Usually, this means her gown will have some kind of sleeves, such as the lace sleeves worn by Kate Middleton. In keeping with the modest theme, bearing cleavage is also a no-no. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the bride is also expected to wear white, a royal trend that was started by none other than Queen Victoria. Earlier than that, royal brides were typically decked out in colorful garments, but Victoria's wedding in 1840 to Prince Albert rang in a new style for all future royal brides. Additionally, a wedding dress fit for royalty should be created by a British designer and, naturally, should be accessorized accordingly with an eye-catching tiara. Finally, before the future bride can get dressed on the day itself, she must first receive the queen's approval of the final look. Every bride wants a beautiful bouquet, one that not only complements her dress and decor, but also makes a statement of its own. But a member of the monarchy cannot have just any old bridal flowers for a royal wedding. Per tradition, a royal bride's bouquet must contain a sprig of myrtle. This unique custom started in 1858, when Princess Victoria, daughter of Queen Victoria, added the unique herb to her bridal flowers. Initially, the myrtle was given as a gift to Queen Victoria by Prince Albert's grandmother and was later planted in the royal couple's vacation home, Osborne House. The myrtle used for modern royal brides comes from a bush derived from the original plant. Allegedly, this plant is said to be a symbol of luck and loyalty, and to this day, many royal brides have followed the tradition of including a sprig of myrtle in their bouquets. For example, the queen put her myrtle among white orchids, while the late Princess Diana surrounded her sprig with white and gold stephanotis, gardenias, and orchids. Kate Middleton placed hers alongside Sweet William, Lily of the Valley, and Hyacinth. Lastly, Meghan Markle arranged myrtle among one of Diana's favorite flowers, forget-me-nots. Markle's flowers also included sweet peas, Lily of the Valley, and jasmine. If there's one thing the monarchy loves when it comes to weddings, it's tradition. And this custom definitely appeals to a royal's inner romantic. Having the royal bridal party appear on the balcony at Buckingham Palace is a special tradition that began with Queen Victoria and Prince Albert in 1840. From there, newlywed royal couples have continued the practice, with the Queen Mother appearing in 1923 and Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip appearing in 1947. However, a new ritual began in 1981 when Prince Charles and Princess Diana shared a kiss on the balcony. This memorable custom created a new standard for royal newlyweds. Since that first iconic balcony kiss, other royal couples have followed suit. In the documentary series Finding Sarah, From Royalty to the Real World, Sarah Ferguson tells host Oprah Winfrey, And everybody told us not to kiss on the balcony, and so we did it deliberately. We both were so in love. Likewise, Princess Diana's son, Prince William, also famously followed in his mother's footsteps, sharing the iconic kiss with his new bride, Kate Middleton. On the other hand, Prince Harry, who wed Meghan Markle at Windsor Castle, didn't have a balcony moment, as they weren't near Buckingham Palace for their wedding. The couple instead shared a public kiss right outside the church. At most weddings, the groom dresses in a well-fitted tuxedo or suit. But a royal husband-to-be won't be seen in an outfit like that. Instead, a royal groom traditionally wears military regalia. This custom isn't just because the soon-to-be-married royal was involved in the service, though. No, these ensembles are worn because certain members of the monarchy have honorary military titles given to them by the queen. Recent royal grooms to continue this practice include Prince William. Although he followed tradition, William surprised guests by wearing a red Irish guards outfit instead of a Royal Air Force uniform. This choice was unexpected, since the Duke of Cambridge served in the RAF, but instead chose to observe his honorary rank of Colonel of the Irish Guards. Similarly, 
Prince Harry wore a decorated dark blue captain's uniform, tailored by Deej and Skinner. His beard also constituted a break from tradition at the wedding, as the British Army doesn't typically permit beards. Before the wedding, historian Hugo Vickers pointed out that it would be unlikely for Harry to wear his uniform with a beard, though he did admit that, against all advice, Harry does do it on occasion. A royal bride should hold on tight to her bouquet. As tradition states that the bridal flowers be placed on the tomb of the unknown warrior in Westminster Abbey as a military tribute. This practice of honoring those who served first began with the Queen Mother, who placed her bouquet on the unknown warrior's grave in recognition of her late brother Fergus, who died in 1915 at the Battle of Luz. The grave of the unknown warrior contains the remains of an unidentified British serviceman whose body was brought from northern France and buried on November 11, 1920. This man is meant to represent all the fallen members of the British military, who died during World War I and whose bodies remain undiscovered or unidentified. Many royals have continued this custom, one of whom is Princess Beatrice. On Remembrance Sunday in 2020, Beatrice shared a photo to Twitter of her wedding bouquet placed on the unknown warrior's tomb. She captioned the image, "'Today we remember and honor all those who sacrificed so much for us. We shall never forget.'" Princess Eugenie also shared an homage in a since-deleted Instagram story in which she reflected on the significance of the grave and service members. She added, "'As with tradition, my wedding bouquet was laid on there.'" Depending on where a royal stands in line to the throne, they might require the queen's approval just to get married in the first place. That said, these royal rules have loosened up a bit in recent years. In 2015, the Succession to the Crown Act replaced the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, making it so that only the first six in line to inherit the throne need the queen's approval to get married. But nothing has changed for those six people. Looking at one of the multi-page letters of endorsement that the queen gave for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, it becomes clear that this protocol isn't one to take lightly. She wrote, My lords, I declare my consent to a contract of matrimony between my most dearly beloved grandson, Prince Henry Charles Albert David of Wales, and Rachel Meghan Markle, which consent I am causing to be signified under the Great Seal and to be entered in the books of the Privy Council. Not exactly heartwarming. Still, it was at least nice of her to call him beloved. Boom. There are plenty of issues for a couple to discuss before they get married, and if that couple also happens to be royal, the subject of religion might become a bit of a problem. For a long time, the 1701 Act of Settlement prohibited royals from marrying Roman Catholics, stating that no Roman Catholic or anyone married to one could inherit the throne. Of course, since then, the law has changed. However, there are still some exceptions that royals must take into account. For example, even though a royal can marry a Roman Catholic and become a ruler, a Roman Catholic royal cannot inherit the throne. Additionally, although the law has been adjusted, being a member of the Church of England is still a clear preference, as evident in Meghan Markle's decision to have a private baptism. The Duchess of Sussex underwent a secret ceremony before her wedding as a sign of respect to her new family. After all, the Queen is the head of the Church of England. Previously, the former actor had experienced a multi-faith upbringing and attended a Roman Catholic high school, though she was not Catholic herself. Regardless, her pre-wedding ceremony only goes to show that tradition matters when it comes to royal religion. When it comes to royal weddings, the bride and groom can't just use any old ring. The tradition of British royals using the rare and highly prized Welsh gold for wedding rings began in 1923 with the Queen Mother. This extravagant custom continued with Queen Elizabeth II's marriage to Prince Philip in 1947, Princess Margaret's marriage in 1960, Prince Charles's marriage to Princess Diana in 1981, and Prince Charles's second marriage to Camilla Parker Bowles in 2005. In the lead-up to their wedding, a statement from Buckingham Palace revealed that Prince William and Kate Middleton would also follow this glamorous practice. In this case, the bride's ring was given to the Duke of Cambridge by his grandmother, the Queen, shortly after the couple's engagement. As for William's brother, Prince Harry, he and Meghan Markle also accessorized in style, with Kensington Palace confirming the news via Twitter. The announcement stated that rings for the couple would be crafted by Cleve and Company, with a follow-up adding, Ms. Markle's ring has been fashioned from a piece of Welsh gold, gifted by Her Majesty, the Queen. Tradition states that, if you're a royal groom, you aren't really supposed to have a best man, per se. 
According to royal expert Marlene Koenig, the words best man aren't exactly typical of a royal wedding. She explained to Town & Country, the best man or best men are officially called supporters. This custom was followed by Prince Charles, who chose his brothers, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, as his supporters when he married Princess Diana. Similarly, Edward also had his brothers as his supporters on his own wedding day. However, Prince William broke tradition by having his brother, Prince Harry, as his best man at his wedding to Kate Middleton. Similarly, Harry followed suit and asked his brother to be his best man at his wedding to Meghan Markle. Kensington Palace confirmed the Duke of Sussex's news via Twitter, adding a follow-up statement declaring that, The Duke of Cambridge is honored to have been asked and is very much looking forward to supporting his brother. Location definitely matters where royal weddings are concerned. While it isn't a hard-set rule, the tradition to hold royal weddings at Westminster Abbey is a custom that dates back to 1100, when Henry I married Princess Matilda of Scotland. Other royal couples who have exchanged vows at this iconic location include King George VI and Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon in 1923, Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips in 1973, and Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson in 1986. The royal nuptials of Prince William and Kate Middleton, who wed in 2011, also took place at Westminster Abbey, a day which saw around 2,000 wedding guests fill the church. That said, Westminster Abbey isn't the only place worthy of a royal wedding. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle chose a different location, for example, St. George's Chapel, which is situated on the grounds of Windsor Castle. St. George's has also seen a number of other royal weddings. Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles had a prayer service in the church after their civil ceremony in 2005 while the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank took place there in 2018. Evidently, picking the right venue for a royal wedding is an important task, one that requires understanding and respect for the family's history and tradition. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.